Hey, what is up guys? It is your voice feed here. I'm so excited for this new series that we'll be doing for the next few months, as long as you guys receive well to it. But what we'll be doing is I have a three camera mark count here. This is something I've done in the past. I had a series on the website where I brought a 3K account all the way up to 6K by randoming. I never really finished it. It was very on and off, but it had a great response. Also, Henry has done a series on this. BSJ has done something similar to this as of late as well, where you plan a smurf, you go through all of your thoughts in game. As the game is going on, I'll be going through my thoughts so you can get inside of the head of a high mark player and you can apply the concepts to your games as well. Because I understand that, you know, sometimes when I look at pro matches, it can be a lot to digest. It can often feel like the games that they're playing in are completely different, almost to the point where it's a different game. And so I'm super excited to bring the series. Now, why is this special? And what will I be doing to make this even better for you guys? Every single video in the comments of the video, what you can do is you can comment down below what hero I should play in the next episode. So when I'm going to make a new video, I will go to the last episode, I will go to the comments, and whatever hero has the most likes, I will play that hero in the next episode of this series. So it's going to be very inclusive. I thought that's a cool idea to really bring the community together and to make sure I provide content that people actually want to watch. And so now, without further ado, this has been a long intro. Smash the like button and subscribe if you're excited for this video. And of course, subscribe to the Game Leap website if you want more content like this every day. Who knows, maybe I'll post a game or two there uh, of Unrank from this account. All right, getting to the first game. So we have a Wind Ranger support now. You know, whenever you have a Wind Ranger support, you have the opportunity to put on a lot of pressure at the enemy team, theoretically. <laughs> That's always the things about these pubs. You know, drafting, in my opinion, it doesn't matter that much. It's better to just pick what you're good at and confident on if you're trying to gain MMR. You know, because I was going to say that theoretically, I'm going to pick Mars. Wind Ranger is a very, very good hero in lane when it comes to harassing. And so if I pick another hero with a stun and who's good at harassing, we're going to be able to do a number to whatever carry we're against, which is what I've done here. Mars is really good with win. She also has a stun to allow me to hit a easy spear if I need to in the lane, which is good synergy. Yeah, as I was saying, you never know. Like, you just never know. Also, I'm going to try out a build I saw recently. Looks good. All right, so getting into the laning stage, you know, I'm already thinking about what matchup I am in. And it's one of two things. It's either Jakiro Ricky or CM Ricky. Pretty hard, actually, funny enough. It's definitely not an easy lane, you know. Chikiro is very meh for Mars. Oh god, already a pause. So is CM, they do quite a bit of magical damage. Ricky shouldn't be too bad, though. Even though he could link strike to my back, which, you know, later on into the game is actually pretty good against Mars because he backstabs me. It's fine in the lane. In fact, what's good about Mars early on against Ricky or at any stage against Ricky is if you're able to spear him, your magical damage is quite potent. It's very hard for Ricky. Also, Mars, I would say Mars is pretty good against Lesh. If you can trap that hero in and prevent him from kiting in and out, which is what Lesh needs to do, then you can just easily kill him, right? If you spear him, you can even solo kill him if you're having a good game. Also, I can itemize Pipe. I can itemize Blade Mail for the Lesh. And for Beastmaster, it's definitely a good Vlad's game. You know, it's definitely a very, very good Vlad's game. So I can keep that in mind. Reason being is I have a Jug, I have a Wind, and the enemy team has a lot of physical. So I definitely like Vlad's. I also like... As I said, Blade Mail, Crimson quite a bit. So I have quite a few options. Even Yules. Yules is great here for a couple reasons. I can save people from Ricky, my teammates. I can deal with the Jakiro spells, purge CM stuff. But all right, let's get into the game. So the build we're going here is, is something I saw recently. Oh, what was the? It was, I think it was Yellow Submarines. No, it was some weird team name. Kind of a tier two team against Team Liquid and they won the game. I actually watched the Mars play. He played very, very well. And he went Bracer and Tangos, and it was against the Jug, did extremely well, and having this early HP region and strength with your God's Rebuke is nice. Also, you don't really need a Quelling. Your hero is super high damage, and you have God's Rebuke. So, all in all, I definitely want God's Rebuke to be able to secure creeps. If I don't have God's Rebuke and no Quelling, it can be a bit of a hard time, so. Rune fights, remember guys, please do not stand on the rune and do something like, just Shackle Shot already? All right. <laughs> Um, but it's very important to hit people, like, sometimes people forget to hit, but... I even nuked it a little bit earlier there, but okay, that's good damage. So not only do we get the rune, but we also get a very, very good amount of damage. Now, in terms of items, 
It's a good stick lane. Oh, my jug died. It's a good stick lane. The reason why I say that is Ricky casts a fair amount of spells. Jakiro casts a lot. But also what I'm considering is just buying a second Bracer. That's what the other player did. On top of that, Mangos are always good because I will have mana problems at some point. So I'll have to buy stick, clarities, mangoes, etc. But nonetheless, we forced a lot of region of the Ricky. He already had two tangos, so good for us. Now here, big advantage of my hero is that I can secure the range creep and he can't. And so now I can do this. After that, I can pull the creeps onto my range creep and then bully him. So I'll force my range creep and now I'm just going to start hitting him. I even should have denied the range creep there. Oh, there goes a melee creep. No big deal. So I'll go for this deny. Because of my bracer and because I'm just Mars, I have very high damage. And so it's important that I just deny a fair amount of creeps. He's actually pulling a lot of aggro. It's kind of funny, you know? I don't really expect players at this bracket to pull aggro too consistently. Also, this Shakira is going to kill my Wind Ranger. She's dead. <laughs> It is what it is. Sometimes people overextend. And really, there's nothing you can do about that. You know, like, I think a lot of people get tilted when their teammates do these type of things, but it's really completely up to them. You know, they're, sometimes they're just going to feed and it is what it is. No, I'm definitely going to go two bracers. So anytime your lane is going well, this two bracer build is really nice as I miss a CS. It's really, really nice. I'm going to pull aggro onto my range creep. Wind Ranger's going for some CS today. Pretty good, pretty good. Now we can even bait him onto this range creep here. Or not. And then if, if he doesn't go for it, well, we get a free range creep denied. So really, as you can see, it's kind of just a win-win as their Jakiro has pulled. So I will go contest that. Might want some tangos here. It's a high harass lane. Okay, only one creep was denied. And now what's nice about this Jakiro single pulling, even though we did lose a creep, is we can easily pull this back onto our wave and we will reset it here. I've also played a game recently where I was laning with an Underlord and he just like nukes the wave when it was under our tower. Not completely under it, not dying to the tower, but close to it like this, which is not a good thing, right? That is quite bad actually. Deny. And I think a lot of people might look at what I'm doing here and they're gonna assume like, oh, you're not killing the Ricky? What are you doing? Like you're losing the lane, but what's much more important is I just get denies like this. Like, yeah, my Wind Ranger sapping a bit of XP their Jakiro got to pull off, but you don't have to crush the lane early on. Like sometimes it's just not easy to do that. You know, like your hero just doesn't allow you uh, to do that or the matchup and that's fine. And I understand in this matchup, I'm going to be able to start killing the Ricky when I get a bunch of points in spear. And so my approach to this lane is I'm going to buy a bunch of mana regen items. I can go on this guy. Uh, I really want to go on the Ricky. I'll spear him to the side. Now we can chip him down. Oh wow, he didn't blink strike. I thought he was going to blink strike, but yeah. Okay. Now we first out a blink strike, which is good. And back to the wave. Now I see that there's a double wave here. So I really want to aggro deny as much as possible. So this creep will come up. I want to deny it as soon as possible, but I want to focus this. Yes. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Try to get him to blink on this. Nice. So he blinked on it. Now I can harass him, right? So you see how I can bait him in for creeps and more people have to abuse that, right? Now he's dead. That's what I'm saying, guys. I knew I'm going to kill him when I get more levels and when I keep the wave back and bait him on the creeps. And more players have to get in this habit. Also, this is a really nice side pull. More players have to get in this habit of side pulling and baiting people onto creeps and stop chasing them. If you want to kill people, learn to bait them. Don't chase them. It's really crucial to keep up your CS, right? Because if you don't chase them, you'll naturally get higher CS. If you do chase them, you'll miss half the wave. That's not good. Also, I'm going to W for these creeps. It's trying to deny me. Nope. Range creep, dead. <laughs> now here, there's actually bounties coming up, which looks like we will not be getting. It's not the end of the world. Also a big thing under tower guys is it's really easy to grief creeps under tower. But you see right there, it's because if you get good at learning the tower intervals, you can just bully people. Also, at this point, I'm so much stronger than him. So I'm just going to start auto attacking. The reason why I'm stronger is I have two bracers and he has like a bunch of random stat items that don't equate to the strength of a bracer. And so it's important that I bully him. Also, we're getting ganked. So I'm going to run because Leshrac counters me. But I'm not going to go too far away. It looks like he's just going back to his lane. So we're chilling. And now we'll be able to get a kill on the Ricky. That Zeusol was very fortunate. <laughs> 
I don't, obviously the Zeus ult wasn't for us, but hey, as I said, with these two bracers, I'm just going to click the Ricky over and over and over again, right? Keep the wave back, keep denying. When Ricky walks up for CS, I bring the wave back. Ah, my clarity. I need the range creep though. No. Okay, then we'll buy phase boots. Lane's going super well, so definitely a phase boots lane. Also, I could have bought a bottle. I was having such a good time. Bottle would have been very acceptable here. But I do have two mangoes. And with these mangoes, can be pretty hard to kill Ricky. I have to chip him down a lot. He also has a million stat items, as he should. But I just wanted to deny his cart. <laughs> Got him. Remember, we can keep baiting him onto the wave, right? The more I deny his creeps, the more anxious he's going to get. These shackle shots are mildly useless, but it is what it is. The reason why I say they're useless is I can't really follow them up, right? So they don't they don't do anything. It's like our mid loss pretty hard. Okay, I'm just gonna kill this guy. So something you can do with Mars is when they get bounced back by the arena, it prevents them from juking and it lets you hit them easily. So that's not exactly what I want to do. I want to kill the Ricky, but honestly, the gold is good here. So I'm not really that afraid of this guy. And I'm gonna buy another mango and another clarity, just so I have enough mana to continue to spam my spells. I do have this wand. Am I getting ganked by a Lesh? Why is this guy manning up so hard? I guess he just assumes he's stronger. Just somewhat understandable. I okay, I am getting ganked by the Lesh, so we need to run. Map awareness, map awareness, guys. Map awareness. And now he's dead! And now this Ricky might die too if he messes up. Oh god, no, okay, I'm dead. But um, yeah, we baited him under terror there. And the only reason why that happens and he dies, not the Ricky thing, that was, you know, it's okay. I was low, I got ganked. I had to bait him. But um, the whole Leshrac thing, right? You bait him in, and the only reason why that's possible is because of good map awareness. Also, this guy's a Necrobook. I kind of want to gank him. I don't want to gank him. Also, if I'm thinking about going Deso. So Deso is the build you go if you want to solo carry. Vlad's isn't bad as well, but Deso is solid. Now here, this guy is very far up, so I'm actually going to buy a smoke and use it to catch him just to make sure, keep it safe. So I'm going to lead with my W to play it safe. You know, anytime you gang someone like that, it's important you lead with your W. Reason for that is it slows them, right? You want to play it safe, hit the slow, and you're chilling. Now I'm going to I'm gonna max out my, my W here. I don't feel the need to take the point in E. It is good against Beastmaster, but that's hit, so... I think I'm going to go this route. Also, I might go the Vlads. The reason why I like the Vlads is the mana is very nice. Also, I'll take the Keen Optic any day. I'm going to go Deso. Also, the runes are coming up. So, with these runes coming up... Okay, my Jug's back. I did not realize. It's also holding a Faded Brooch in his inventory. Um, now here, I really don't want to stick bottom at all. I don't want to be in the same lane as my Jug. Now, I don't know what he's doing. I guess he's just scared. He can't even lane bottom, so he needs to be given mid. I also feel like I kind of need to protect him. Oh, no. Yeah, he's dead. I need to just run. Oh, if I run fast enough here, there's a very small chance I live. No, I'm dead. Now, my main goal of this game, what I have to do for the rest of this game, is I have to avoid these bad engagements. As I said, the Leshrac is a hard counter to me early on. So I need to avoid these bad engagements. And I need to kill the Leshrac with my ulti. He's going to be my main target this game. I want to shut him down at all costs. And so wherever he goes, I'm going to hunt him. I'm even going to buy a smoke here because I really want to hunt him with my ulti. So I see him mid. I mean, they might be able to kill him here. Okay, I'm definitely TPing mid for this. I'll put away my smoke. Oh, nice. He's just dead. Oh, she's really not canceling that ulti. And now I immediately want to get back to his side lane, right? I don't want to push any towers. This tower is actually already dead somehow. I have no idea how that is. But I want to immediately go back to a place where I can farm. In order for me to carry this game, I still need to get relatively farmed. Also, there is an Arcane Ring in base, which is far better. So I'm going to take that Arcane Ring, and I'm going to put this Keen Optic in base so that my Zeus can take it. It's Ricky. I don't want to let him know that I can see him yet. I'm also going to hand my Zeus to slide him. Mm, can't TP bottom, so it, it's not it's not the end of the world. Sometimes you just can't TB to these fights. It's fine, you can't be at everything. My team lost their side lane, so it's to be expected that this is gonna happen.
Just hear him on her tower for some damage. Nothing insane. And I'll continue to farm my Deso. I really like the spear cooldown. It's It makes it so low, but at the same time, as I said, I'm trying to carry this game. My Jug is doing absolutely atrocious, and so I'll take it upon myself to carry this game. Also, by staying in the lane here, I'm making Ricky have a much worse time. Only thing I have to be careful about is getting ganked. Actually, we'll be able to kill him here. Nice. That's big. Now, I'm afraid I'm going to get ganked. So, big thing to understand, guys, is if you ever kill a carry like that... Also, I messed that up. I didn't spear nearly early enough. I misclicked. But if you ever get a kill in a side lane, it is crucial that you act as if they're going to gank you. You see how they're both top now? I cannot stress how common this is. If you kill a core nine times out of ten, their team will just, like, mass TP, even if they're already dead. I'm serious. Now, here, I even... We can maybe even kill this guy. This is risky. I don't like this really much. All right, it's working. Zeus is here. Yep. Nice. Ricky's back top two. So now I'm looking at the mini map, right? Every time a fight ends, I look at the map and I say, where can I farm? Now, in this case, Jug is going bottom. Good for him. He can keep that. Pop my arcane ring. The Jug's going to be bottom. I'm a little bit concerned about him getting ganked and dying here. What the Jug has to be doing, guys, he should be in the triangle. Like, he needs to be mid and triangle. I should realistically be bottom, but even then, oh my god, he's gonna get roared. I could have TP'd right away. Probably should have. Let's hope he doesn't die. Yeah, he doesn't really understand his limits, but it is what it is. Once again, as I said, I'm the carry of this game. Just how I see this game. Oh god, my team is dying, dying. I even have my ulti again, which means I can kill, like, the Lesh rack, for instance. It's definitely possible that I can just kill Lesh. Also, I can TP bottom and smoke behind this guy. He's clearly being quite the nuisance to my team, also. They're dying, so I'll push this wave in ASAP, and then I'll look back bottom and see if I can help. I don't really know what's happening, but this is quite the disaster. Okay, he's going on my bench. I'll TP here. This this guy can die. I don't want an arena right away. I'll do it now. Yeah, so he's saying team hello, but People don't, like, the thing is, guys, you're going to get flamed for farming in these low MMR games. Okay, this is actually average MMR. You're going to get flamed for farming. You just have to shake it off. Because my Jug died. I decided it wasn't a good fight. I don't TP. Then my two supports TP in when they can't do anything. They die. And, like, yeah, I can TP in early, and that is an option. But don't feel, like, bad if your teammates flame you for not TPing. Oh, no, this is probably dead here. He can ulti, actually, and kill this guy. Nice. I'm gonna try to save him from these boars. Oh, he's TPing. Never mind, he's dead. Nuke! Oh, he didn't nuke. So anytime you're dying, guys, cast your spells, right? Cast your spells. Also, I need to buy a TP. Just making the Ricky waste some of his mana. I don't really need to pressure him. Nice, my team's killing him. Let's go, team! Yes! Now, another thing is, you see how I'm very far away from my team here? That insinuates to me that the enemy team might gank me, right? So they might gank me. I'm looking at the map right now. I see nothing. So I'm going to play a bit defensive. I'm even going to smoke here. I have my Deso. And I'm going to consider going mid. I'm also just thinking buying BKB. I definitely need a BKB here. It's way too important. But I can actually instant kill either of these people if I hit them with the arena. So I'll put down a ward here. And I'll just take the Lesh kill. And that's the power of getting farm. Right, guys? I push in some waves. I get my solo pickoffs. Then I buy a smoke. I read the mini map, I have a cooldown, I make a play. Now, guess what I'm going to do? Like, really think about this. Now that I don't have my ultimate, what am I going to do for a bit of time? I'm going to consider keeping top because my jug's dying again. No, I kind of actually. I was thinking about it, but the big thing here is I'm going to hit some creeps. I don't have my spells. I don't feel that strong. I can show up here. Like, this looks okay, but you see how I don't have a tier two? It's very awkward. I will run to this fight, though, because... It looks like it's going to extend a little bit in these long extended fights or, you know, you can show up to them. Also, my Zeus is in the middle of the enemy team. Yeah, they're all dying to magical. I might be able to pick this Ricky off. Actually, they're going to go on him. Can you ulti? 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 Ugh. Messed up the timing.
I'm getting destroyed by this boar. Okay, we'll have to chill. That's fine. Oh, we even have a healing ward here. Okay. I can go back in with this healing ward. My team has no mana though, right? I, it's important for me to look at my team here. Oh, he's even giving me the healing ward. Okay, so I don't want to go for a pick off here because they probably have a ward. You see how the fight broke out there? That means there's probably a ward. And so I'm actually going to wrap around here and I'm going to wait on this creep wave. And I'm going to say someone will probably show up, right? Okay, no one so far. I do expect the Ricky to come, if I had to guess. There he is. And um, you see how, I, how that works, guys. Basically, I need to get inside the enemy team's head and I need to think, what does it take for them to assume we're not there? And I would assume for them, it has to take like at least five to 10 seconds of no one showing when the wave's hitting their tower. And when that happens, then, they, you know, he becomes comfortable. I make the play, I hit my spear, you know, good good for me, I suppose. <laughs> I'll actually hit this tower too. This is a bit dangerous, but that's a big play, you know. These, these are big plays I have to make if I want to win this game. And the great thing about this Deso build is this. Yeah, he's right there, all missing. We need to be careful. If we have a word, we can play on it. I'll continue to use my broken W. As I said, the greatest part about this build. Also, Faded Brooch is definitely better than Arcane Ring, in my opinion. Being able to position very effectively is really nice. The armor is kind of good here, though. I lack some armor. It's only two, so I'm gonna go for the brooch. And I could actually go for another kill on this wave, like right here. I could actually just sit behind this wave, not show, and go for another kill. But I'm a bit uncomfortable doing that now. I've shown top, and whenever I show top like that, and the enemy team is not showing anywhere, I am going to assume they're running at me. And what do you know? They probably were. Right? There's no guarantee that they were there, but I'm gonna assume that they probably were. I'll back up, I'll pick up some bounties, and I'm gonna definitely buy a BKB next. Also, there's a Tillman stock, I'll ping that out for my team. Now here we can even smoke. Do we have a smoke? Let's smoke. Okay, kill the Lesh, I have blink. No, I communicate what we're gonna do, right? He actually seemingly is afraid, but I'm still fine with going for this. I'm actually going to go for the Ricky. I missed him. Okay. Whatever. These people should die anyway. We're pretty freaking strong and he's stuck. Oh, or not. Wow, that's really bad then. Oh boy. Okay. I missed my spirit and that's going to cost us. Well, that's bad. I went greedy for the Ricky and I missed. No excuses. They actually can die mid here though. If Jug Omni slashes. He's a skip. You're gonna die. Right, he's going in. I'm gonna back him up. Oh my god, they're all dead. I'm gonna protect him from the Ricky just in case Ricky goes in. Can you healing ward? Thank you. Well, that was big. <laughs> I, I assumed you'd be able to kill them. I even hesitated a bit there. That was I played that fairly poorly. That's the thing, guys. Like you always have to adapt. You know, like the big thing I think players think about high more players is that they never make mistakes and. I'm not some Mars spammer, right? So I'm gonna make mistakes mechanically. I'm not gonna hit all of my spells, but what I definitely will do is I'm gonna say, okay, that was my fault. My teammates died there because it was my fault. I missed and that's fine. <laughs> it's great. Actually, I kind of want to stack these ancients. I'll even spear them for it. I'm thinking about pushing in top here. I do have my arena, so I'm down to make a play, but nothing's really happening. My jug is all the way bottom by himself. He also doesn't have Omni Slash, so I'm not too keen to... Careful jug, they might gank me. I'm not too keen to take a fight. Got, we don't have Omni Slash or Jug. You should be careful. So I'll just tell my team what I think. If they don't want to do it, like, that's fine. I give them my opinion. If they don't want to listen, that's fine. Also, a big thing. You notice how I'm not constantly making calls? If you want people to hate you... Oh my god, my Jug's dead. If you want people to hate you, you constantly make calls. Just make an occasional call. Like, I'm like, Jug, they might gank you. If he doesn't want to listen, that's fine. Funny enough, he'll probably listen to me next time because... I told him what was going to happen, but it is what it is. Only make a couple calls per game. Don't make 40 calls unless you're, you know, respected by your teammates. Then you can make as many calls as you want. Not too keen on hitting this tower. I'd rather someone just TP and kill them. Can I still kill Ricky? Maybe. I might be able to still kill him. Oh, there's a Jakiro here. My team's kind of going in, but I don't have TP, so... It is what it is. I'll just take a Jakiro kill. I honestly definitely, now that I'm thinking about it, I definitely did not have to arena there, but whatever. Arena's a 60 second cooldown. I'm not gonna, not gonna lose sleep over using arena. 
really will not. And I'm back to farming, right guys? Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. I don't like the fight that happens. I don't show up. I don't TP early. I don't follow around my team. I split up the map. I make solo plays when I feel comfortable. I saw the enemy team all bottom. So I jumped to the Kiro, right? Now I'm going to go back top. I'll shove in this wave. Reason why I feel comfortable is they just were bottom once again. It's very uncommon at this bracket for everyone to go from bottom to top. OG does that, but this is not OG. All right, also I'm gonna take the spear stun. I, I like that town a lot. It's very nice. My team is very far up here. Thinking about going AC next. Stick to the, the DPS route. Definitely good. Also, they're all bottom here. My jug's not at this fight though, so I'm just gonna push in the wave. If my jug was there, I would TP, but once again, this is the problem about these Lomar games. You see where they're fighting? How can I show up to this, right? The answer is I can't. I can't show up to it. And this is this is what people do in this bracket. They just push a random tower and know what they're going to do. They're going to ping me. That's going to be the reason. But the thing is, it doesn't make sense to push that tower. It doesn't give Roche control, right? It doesn't give Roche control. Our jug wasn't even alive when they started pushing it. And a winter ranger will say, Mars, what are you doing? When I'm actually pushing in the wave and taking the tower that gives us more map control for Roshan, right? Also, he's right. Definitely can take this outpost now after I take this war. But this is a big outpost too, right? It's a big outpost. Now we get an outpost because of this. So, oh, this is what I'm saying, guys. You have to... Okay, also, I might want to take the bottom to help my guy here. I don't like when he's making solo plays like this. He's probably going to have me slash. Ugh, I feel like he's going to die. Uh, okay, maybe I can kill the slash. I think I can just auto attack him to death. Or not. Oh, let me get on my arena. Oh, you're dead now, boy. Now I need to get out. Actually, might even go Vlads. I still like the Vlads. I'm gonna TP back to base. AC Shivas is good too. Both these items are good. I think I'm gonna go AC. It's just the best item for, like, right there, if I had a bit more attack speed and DPS, I could have easily killed the Lesh, even without Arena. Next time, I'm just going to Arena him. The reason why I don't want to Arena that guy there, by the way, the main reason is because he has Yule. So if I leave with Arena, there's a chance he just Yules me and wastes my time. And so I'm kind of, like, hesitant to to Arena him there. But I definitely I, I definitely think I can catch him off guard and do it anyway. Our Jug wants to farm this. I will let him have it. Oh, nice. He got a Paladin Sword. That's a good freaking item. I think I, part of me wants to take this dragon skill. I think I have enough mana now. We need to group his five. We can Roche. Smoke. Smoke to Roche. Honestly, I can dump this guy. Wow, how did I miss him with that? Whatever. He was so far out of position, that was insane. <laughs> I, even though I've missed multiple spears this game, he is very... I don't know why that guy's so far out. <laughs> this is vibing, because also I saw someone bottom. I don't remember who it was, but my brain's like, wait, someone's bottom. You can go on mid. Numbers advantages are a big deal, right? Now I'm going to spam ping Roche. Go Roche. Oh, okay, I guess we can smoke. <laughs> We're kind of already next to the Roshan pit, but all right, we can smoke. The reason why you want to smoke before... This is kind of sketch. I'm just going to keep hitting this. I'm going to wait for my arena, right? I have arena in 15. This Beastmaster is actually extremely fun. Finish Roche. Look, and now you see how they're just going to go in one by one and kill themselves? This is so common, right? It's so common. Was that real Omni Slash? Yeah, I think it was, but... Oh no, that was probably the mini one. Look, and this is... That is the power of Roshan. Their Leshrac was dead, but they felt compelled to fight. Right? Their Lesh is dead, they feel compelled to fight. Because of that, what is Jug doing? And, and that's the power. Like, they go in one by one, we make them fight us, then they kill themselves. They're like, oh, we have to contest, we have to contest. Let's back after this tower, we have no mana. Also, when I give calls, I, I really like to give a small reason. Like, I'm like, hey guys, we have no mana. Then I'm, they're like, oh yeah, I can get behind that. At least that's my theory behind it. You give them a reason, right? 
If you just tell people what to do, it can be annoying. But if you give them a legitimate reason, I think people begin to understand and, and they appreciate your, your reasoning. So I'm going to farm back to base. This Paladin Sword is really nice. I can lifesteal with it. I do lack some armor, but I think I have enough. <laughs> and I'm buying AC next, so we should be okay. Also, I'm tempted to take the Tome, but I don't think Mars' 25s are even that good, so I will keep what I have. So my Bracer. Should have bought a Clarity. I need them. Also, I'll buy the Smoke. I'm going to go greedy by the Hyperstone. <laughs> this is very greedy, guys, but whatever. Our Jug is just making a YOLO play. Like, see, there's no reason for him to hit that tower. People just feel like they have to do stuff. What is he doing? We need to help our Jug. Everyone run to him. Honestly, he's doing fine right now. That's for sure. His illusions are solo killing the supports. <laughs> he's killing them. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's go, boys. <laughs> We're doing it! That guy's dead too, for sure. That's real Omni Slash, he's dead. Even Ricky's in now, one by one, boys. I'm catching this guy. Oh! Oh! <laughs> the blind prediction. <laughs> oh. We're the best. And now we've won. And you guys are gonna say, Speed, it's because your teammates won your lane. No, it's not. My Zeus lost mid. Okay, he went like evenish, and my jug was getting crushed. But the thing is, when you don't force your team into bad fights, and when you don't take constant fights when you're losing, you actually can give yourself the opportunity to cash back into the game, right? You can get some items, get some pickoffs, and that, those pickoffs and good efficiency that I'm doing around the top lane enable me to just get a Deso that lets me kill the Lesh and kill the Ricky and kill the Jakiro, right? If I don't have this item and I just keep fighting, which probably won't give me any gold and just get me killed against this farmed Lesh. Then we'll feed. Yeah, he's right. We can just end. I'll just kill this guy. Oh, I didn't have my thing. Whatever. Force the yules. Got him. See him. What you doing, girl? What you doing, girl? Oh, I got ice bath. Whoa! He's killing me. Should have W'd much earlier. Got greedy. Okay, my team is feeding. I'm going to take the racks. <laughs> oh god. Looks like I'm hitting range racks. <gasps> Don't worry. Does he have spin? Oh, he's a BKB? What the? Don't mind me, I'm just gonna hit some racks. I'll cast my spear. I'll be useful. Cleanup crew here. Don't mind me. Just clean it up. Do I take the heal for the memes? It's not the better talent. You're supposed to take the crit here, but I'm taking the crit. Mega crit. <laughs> no. If you awaken, my kill. And you understand that black implies white. They want the smoke. Oh, they're all trapped. Life implies death. Or shall I say, death implies life. You can feel yourself. Alright, we did it, boys. Yeah, and I hope that gives you some key points to just do better as an offlaner. So many people play offlane so sacrificial. I pick offlane in the intent to carry my games, especially if I'm playing a hero that can farm like Mars. Especially, too, when my Juggernaut is not having a good game. You know, like, I could make space for him, but honestly, if you think you're better than him and you're learning and you know what you're doing, you can easily carry games. Not by killing everybody, necessarily, but getting pickoffs, forcing rotations, making the right calls, right? Calls are a big thing, too. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys see that all the little things are what adds up to being a high MMR player. It's not necessarily some crazy outplay and some perfect consistency. Those things matter, but they're not the big things, right? They're really not what carries you to, to the next level, to the next bracket. Wow, we even got commended. Hype. Hype, hype, hype. Two commends. Woo! Nice. Our team is happy. But yeah, okay. Woo! Three? All right, we're commending back. Everyone's in a good mood today, but all right. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, let me know who I will be playing next. You have to tell me. 
Okay, who should I play next? Is it Safe Lane Jug, Safe Lane PA, Mid Zeus, Invoker? My Invoker is pretty meh, but maybe that's what you guys want to see. Do you want to see me play carry techies? You can pick whatever you want, any role, any hero. I will do my best to win, no matter how much my team tilts. We'll make it work. But uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in that episode. And comment down below. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.